All right, calculus. 3.4 had to do with vertical motion. Well, that's the first thing we're going to talk about is vertical motion. Okay. Um, we're going to use velocity and other rates of change for this. Um, the first problem that we did in class, well, I'm going to skip the first one, the second one. We talked about uh, a dynamite, nice little stick of dynamite, TNT, and explodes, boom, 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 and it shoots this rock straight up in the air, okay? Um, well, the rock, it says it reaches a height of... 160t minus 16t squared feet, okay, after a certain amount of time, so after a certain amount of seconds, okay. Um, remember S, when we, by the way, S of T, we're talking about position, okay. Uh, velocity is V of T, velocity, and then A of T, See if I can fit this. Acceleration. And we'll, again, talk about what each of those are. So uh, the first question says, how high does the rock go? But before we get there, just a reminder, the derivative, so ds dt, um, the derivative of uh, position is going to equal velocity, v of t. Okay? The derivative of position is equal to velocity. In like manner, the derivative of velocity is equal to acceleration. Okay? Again, velocity and acceleration. So, in actuality, acceleration is the second derivative of position, the first derivative of velocity. All right, so it says, how high does the rock go? So, I'm going to rewrite my little equation here. Okay? How high does the rock go? Well, so to solve for this first question, we're going to find the velocity because if you think about it, when a rock gets shot into the air, so here goes our little drawing here, when it reaches its max height, the velocity is going to be zero and because at some point it's, it's going fast, 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 and then it gets to the top and it's slowing down with its speed and then eventually hits zero and that's the peak. So if we could find the velocity, which is the derivative of position, then we could find how high the rock goes. So therefore the derivative, okay, of position is going to be 160 minus 32t. Now again, what we said is the velocity is going to be set equal to zero because that's when it's going to reach its max height. So we do 160 is equal to 32t, and if you divide that out, that's uh, sorry, uh, five seconds. Okay. So after five seconds, it will reach its highest. But notice that the question says, how high? So we actually are trying to find the position after five seconds. So we just go back here, we plug in. After five seconds, we have, it's 500, 800, uh, minus 25 times 16, which is, I don't know why I don't know off the top of my head, 400. So therefore, it's equal to 400, okay? And we want to label it correctly, and it's being shot, it says, uh, in terms of feet. So this would be our answer, okay? How high does the rock go? The rock goes 400 feet. Now the next question was, what's the velocity and speed of the rock when it is 256 feet above the ground on the way up and on the way down? Because everything that goes up must come down. Well... Um, <coughs> 256 feet, that has to do with position. So what we can do is actually set our position equation equal to 256 feet. Okay, when is our position 256 feet? Um, if we can figure that out, uh, how long that's going to take, then we can find the velocity. So basically we have t to the first, t to the second, no t. So hopefully you guys have memorized, that means get one side equal to zero, minus 160t plus 256. Now we don't like using those big numbers for factoring, so we're gonna factor out here as 16. We're left with t squared minus 10t plus 16. 56 divided, 256 divided by 16 is 16. So now we can actually break this into two parentheses. 
t minus, t minus, and it's going to be 8 and 2. 8 times 2 is 16, 8 plus 2 is 10. So our two times here are 2 and 8. So that's the time, but again, it says what's the velocity and speed of the rock. So the velocity, which we said, is 160 minus 32t. The velocity after 2 seconds, when you plug in 2, you get 160 minus 64, which is 96 uh, feet per second. Okay? And V of 8, so the velocity after 8 seconds, you get 160 minus, that's 240, 256, which is negative 96 feet per second. Okay? So here's the velocity. What's the velocity on the way up? It's going to be in uh, 96 feet per second. On the way down, it's negative 90 feet per second. But also, is what's the speed? And what you need to remember is that speed is the absolute value of velocity, okay? That's weird. It's the absolute value of velocity. So in this case, both speeds are 96 feet per second, okay? Next thing, acceleration at any time if V of T is equal to 160 minus 32t, and acceleration is the derivative of velocity, then we know that the acceleration is equal to negative 32. And again, the way we label that would be feet per second squared. Okay? When does the rock hit the ground? Well, if you think about it, when is a rock on the, what's the height of a rock on the ground? The height is going to be zero. So we go with our position formula. And we say 160t minus 16t squared. When is the height going to be 0? So I'm going to factor out a 16 here. You're left with 10. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to redo that. Factor out a 16t. I'm left with 10 minus t equals 0. So our two times are 0 and 10. Now, obviously, we're talking about when the rock hits the ground, so it's after 10 seconds. So this would be our answer. At 10 seconds, that's when the rock will hit the ground because the height is zero. All right, now the second example we talked about was a particle in motion, okay? So a particle moves along a line, so it's going back and forth. Uh, so that is position at any time. Obviously, the time has to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't have negative time. So we have this equation here, t squared minus 4t plus 3. All right, s is uh, measured in meters. Okay, position is measured in meters. Time is measured in seconds. The first thing I ask for is find the displacement during the first two seconds. So the formula for displacement, since we're talking about position, is going to be s of whatever time we're looking for, 2, minus s of 0. Okay, s of 2 minus s of 0. So we're just going to plug in here. We get 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, plus 3, which is negative 1, minus s of 0, which is 3. So our displacement is negative 4 meters. Okay. Again, if you think about displacement, what that's actually saying is how far off your starting point are you? Um, we're not talking about how far total distance have you traveled, but how far are you from your original spot? Okay. That's what displacement is. Now, the average velocity, that's the one that's basically, it's like slope. It's going to be the change in position over the change in time. So we're talking about the first four seconds. So we do S of 4 minus S of 0 over 4 minus 0. So when I plug that in, that's 16 minus 16, which is 0, plus 3, which is 3, minus s of 0, which is 3 also. So therefore, you just get 0. It's the average velocity be 0 meters per second. Okay? Now, instantaneous velocity is actually, uh, you have to find the derivative. So the instantaneous velocity for this problem is going to be 2t minus 4. Again, you're taking the derivative of position 
right here, t squared minus 4t plus 3. So the derivative would be 2t minus 4. And it's talking about during the first four seconds. So we're going to find v of 4. That's 8 minus 4, which is 4. And since we're talking about velocity, it's meters per second. Okay? And next, the acceleration. The acceleration when t is 4. So if we could find the acceleration, the derivative of velocity, in this case it's 2, we'll notice that there's no variable to plug in. So anywhere, um, it doesn't matter how much time, your acceleration is going to stay the same. 2 meters per second squared. Now, I don't know why that's not filled in. That looks weird. Um, there we go. So the next problem says, describe the motion. When does the particle change direction? Well, if you think about it, your starting position, when, when your time is zero, your starting position is going to be three. Okay, actually, let me get a little better terminology here. When, S, when t is equal to 0, your starting position is 3. Now notice um, your velocity, okay? We need to figure out when does that equal 0. So when it equals 0, that's when there's going to be a change in direction. So again, when does 2t minus 4 equal 0? So we add the 4, 2t two equals, 2t two is equal to 4, therefore, t is equal to 2. So it's going to change direction at t equals 2, but we still need to figure out the motion here. Well, if you think about s of 1, if I were to plug 1 in, okay, to my formula here, t squared minus 4t, I get 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, plus 3, which is 0. Notice, again, this is my position. My position to begin with is at 3. Now I'm going backwards. I'm going to the left because we're talking about going across uh, going back and forth on a line here. So therefore it's going to the left uh, when your time, oh that's not good, when your time is greater or equal to zero all the way until the time it changes directions which we said is two seconds. Now it's going to the right or going positive, okay, now, if it only changes directions one time, so it's going to the left, changes direction once, that means for uh, for good, it's going to be going to the right. So it's going to the right, t is greater than 2. So any time after 2, that's when it's going to the right. I should probably take that off right there. Okay? So again, because it's only changing directions one time. So there you go. I hope that helped, and uh, good luck with that. And the homework was way down here. That was what the homework assignment was. So good luck with that, and let me know if you guys have any questions. All right. Have a good day, calculus.